Hey guys, and welcome to this edition of Scruff's Garage. So today in the garage, I have my 2017 Honda CRF 250L. Uh, we're installing a tail tidy kit. The reason I'm installing that is because I dropped the bike off road at some point and I broke one of the rear turn signals. Not really sure when it happened, but I came out one day and it was uh, dangling down. So I've taken it off for now so it didn't tear up the wiring. I looked at replacing this with a just an original Honda replacement turn signal, but it's like $41 plus shipping compared with a tail tidy kit, which I've kind of been on the fence about doing. Um, this is like 50 bucks off of Amazon. It's one of the more generic kits. Um, it comes with the just bullet style connector. So we'll talk about that here in a second, but this has the integrated uh, brake light, tail light, turn signals and also has the integrated license plate light as well all in a single unit and this is like fifty dollars so for just a little more than just a replacement one of these i can go to a tail tidy kit with everything integrated now the benefit of everything being integrated so you don't have these turn signals hanging off that you risk breaking off road it's a high likelihood as i continue to drop the bike i'll probably break them again the one thing I am slightly concerned about is the benefit to having these things sticking way out is that it's easy to see you. So if you're on the road, other motorists can see that you have your turn signals on. So I'll be a, a little curious to see how bright these LEDs are, both as a tail light, a brake light, and then when you use the turn signals, is it clearly visible that you've got your turn signal on? Uh, I don't want to die on this thing on the street because people don't pay attention. So that's that is important to me because I do ride it on the road some. The other thing that I've been a little hesitant in doing it, the tail tidy, it certainly will look better, but this great big rear fender, uh, you can't see it from that angle, but it catches a bunch of mud. So I'm a little curious to see once all of this is eliminated, does all that mud sling up and end up on the back of my jacket or on my luggage if I'm on a trip and I have stuff mounted back here. Just won't know that until I've got it on. So, I mentioned this has the bullet style connectors. I am unwilling to chop up my factory wiring harness. Uh, I like to keep things OE style connectors. So, I spent an extra $12 on CRFs only. Uh, this little OE style uh, plug kit, if you can see that, comes from a company called 12 O'Clock Labs but it has the OE connector for the tail light and brake light and also for the turn signals as well. So I'll show you how this gets wired to this so that it remains just a plug and play operation and you don't have to cut up the factory side of your harness uh, to splice these in. So uh, this is just one other look at the uh, license plate bracket laser etched with CRF though you won't ever see that because the license plate will be on top of it. So uh, that's what we'll dive into. I'll show you how this gets wired and how this gets installed. Should be pretty easy. One other thing I didn't mention since the new tail tidy uses an LED brake light turn signal tail light uh, assembly that's going to cause a hyper flash uh, set up with your stock turn signal relay. So to fix that, we'll be replacing the turn signal relay uh, as well for one that will work with the LEDs and we don't get the hyper flash uh, situation, which typically means one of your bulbs is blown. Um, it hyper flashes so that you know it changes the load and makes it hyper flash. So we've got one of those. Uh, we'll show you how that gets installed as well. All right, hopefully you can see that. So this is your wiring connection for the tail light, brake light deal. So there's just a little uh, wire holder. Bend that up, kind of pull your wiring loose just a little bit. There's a rubber boot here. We can slide that back so that we can see 
our connection of wiring. So, uh, this orange connector, which I've already got disconnected, uh, goes to the turn signal. Actually, it's an orange and a white. Goes to the turn signal that would have been on this side, but I've broken it, so it's already disconnected. The blue, and again, another white connector here. If you can see, you probably can't see, that snakes through and goes to the turn signal over here. This larger connector with the has three wires that goes to the brake light tail light and then this connector it's a brown and a green wire two wire connector will go down to the license plate light so uh, we're going to disconnect these and then we'll be able to take these bolts out so at this point I'll also make note of how some of this wiring is going to work so uh, 12 o'clock labs is nice. They actually give you uh, a little bit of a wiring diagram for how this is set up. So the way this is set up from the factory, each of these, for whatever reason, has its own ground. So the you know left turn signal has a uh, 12 volt wire coming in and then a ground. Then the, uh, the right turn signal has its own ground. The license plate light has its own ground. When we go to this, everything is integrated all in this one module. So the one ground wire for this will take care of everything. So with the 12 o'clock labs wiring harness, and I'll point out this is for the 2017 and newer. If you have a 16 and older, the connectors are different. So this is not going to apply. Uh, they give you two connectors. These are B for the turn signals. So a right turn signal and a left turn signal, right? So this will match up uh, here. Then in this pack, right, you've got three wires. The black wire is a ground. Let's see, the orange is for the brake signal and the red is for the running light. So that'll be the constant 12 volts. When the key's on, the red wire should see 12 volt all the time. That's your running light. And then the brake light um, that orange wire gets power when you hit one of the brake levers. So uh, we'll make sure we wire it up correctly to the to this light, but we'll have five connections on this side as well, right? So we've got five wires here, five wires here, and then we'll just be able to plug and play. So essentially, some of these connectors won't be used again. So the ground wire for the turn signal, so one and two won't be used. And then the connector, the complete connector for the license plate light won't be used at all because it gets its 12 volt from the same source uh, as the running light or the tail light. Uh, it'll have 12 volts all the time and so it's providing 12 volts to the license plate light all the time as well. So you don't need a separate connector for that. There we go, and the whole assembly comes off, and we're ready to go do some wiring. I'm test fitting a few things, and it's probably easier to show you without all the wiring in here uh, when we do the final install. And I had already seen this complaint online, but these are the four uh, mounting bolts that hold this uh, bracket assembly uh, to the rear subframe of the bike. And when you get three of the four bolts in, this last one is off just ever so slightly. Uh, so I'm going to use a drill bit, probably a step bit or something to open that up just a little bit. The other thing I'll show you, so typically, let's see if we can focus here. When you take uh, the stock assembly off, it leaves a gap back here. So this kit, see these two little, uh, pinhead screws here hold a tiny bracket on you can actually see it through there that fills that gap to reduce the amount of mud and crud that 
uh, will bounce up and get into this assembly, which is nice. Uh, some of them don't include that. Uh, even the TST Industries one, which is significantly more expensive, uh, I've seen that as a complaint with that one, that it leaves that open and obviously mud and stuff can, can get up into that rear tail assembly uh, where all your wiring and stuff is. So it's nice that they include this little tiny bracket uh, that just uh, bolts on. So um, I'm going to take this back off. I'll enlarge that hole. We'll do some wiring and then uh, we'll be pretty simple just to bolt it up. Okay, so while the new tail light assembly does not come with any instructions whatsoever, the Amazon listing uh, showed the wiring schematic for how these are wired. But if you wanted to double check or say it just simply wasn't listed, what you can do if you have a tool like a power probe, if you don't have one of these, it's a bit of an investment, but it, it is immensely useful when doing any type of electrical work or especially troubleshooting. So the other end of this, I've actually got it clamped onto the uh, battery on the bike. So there's a, a positive and a negative clamp. So you see the little light comes on when you know it's got power. What's cool about this thing is you have the little toggle switch here. So you can push up on it and force this to have 12 volts or you can push down and force the ground. You can touch wires or fuses, that sort of thing. And it will, you know, without pushing the button, just touch things and it will tell you that it's a ground or if it's hot. And it also has a lead on it, which is this little alligator clip down here. So the black wire is my ground. My, let's see if we can, there we go. So according to the wiring schematic, it says that yellow should be my right turn signal. So let's grab our yellow wire and we'll force 12 volts. And there we go. So we got right turn signal. The brown is the left turn signal. Check. Green is the tail light. So there's our tail light. And you can see it also runs the uh, license plate light there on the bottom. And then red is for our brake light. See, that's a little bit brighter in the tail light assembly. So that's a way to check. Number one, make sure this thing works before we wire it up and to confirm the wiring schematic as well. So when we match it up to our OE plug connectors, uh, we know which wire goes to what so we get this thing uh, wired correctly. Okay, so I'm back at the bike. I've got the bracket loosely mounted. I enlarge one of the holes uh, so I can get all of my mounting uh, bolts in and I've got the tail light uh, loosely mounted to the bracket you run the wiring through so here's the, our finished wiring we've got the two turn signals and then we've got the brake light tail light uh, license plate light assembly and I use some heat shrink wrapping um, on all my solder connections so we hopefully we keep this uh, from any electrical shorts so now we just plug in That goes there. I think we said blue to blue. And then the white to the orange. And as we talked about before, these two white connectors were ground wires. They're no longer needed. They all share this common ground. And then this two pin connector was for the license plate light, but that's now integrated. So it gets its power and ground through this plug as well. So those are no longer needed. So that gets tucked up in there. Okay. And before I button everything up, do a quick function test. So there's our tail light. And our license plate light, brake light, and 
Uh, turn signal. There we go. So we see the hyper flash, but we've got it at least wired correctly. So uh, I'm going to finish getting this put back together and then we'll work on the uh, relay for the turn signal to take care of the uh, hyper flash. And that's another look. So I mentioned before this little plate, if you can see that, the lighting's terrible from this angle that fits uh, up in here. You can see without it, all of your wiring would be exposed obviously a lot of mud and stuff like that would get up in there so it's nice that they include this like i said it's just two little pan head screws uh, that will cover that up okay so the turn signal relay is on the right hand side of the bike so you have to take this uh, fairing off which is obviously uh, pretty easy because you've got most of it already removed doing the tail tidy uh, to get space back here so the rear brake fluid reservoir mounts right here there's a little bolt uh, to take that out i took off i took out the four screws that hold on the cover uh, to the air box uh, it just gives a little bit more room to get your hand in here and then there's also a hose Let me get this out of the way uh, this hose right here that plugs into the air box has this little spring clip uh, so just compress that and you can slide the clip back and then you can pull that uh, that hose off the air box. Then that allows you to get to the uh, to the factory turn signal relay, which is in here and it's mounted on like a little rubber post that the back side of this uh, clips into. So you can, it's tough to get your hand in there, but you can wiggle it up and get it out of that clip and then push down, there's a rubber boot. You may not be able to see that but there's a rubber boot that fits up over uh, this connection so you kind of pull that rubber boot down i used a uh, a small flathead screwdriver to push the boot down and then it's just a simple clip to get it unplugged then you plug in the new relay and i've already turned it on check your turn signals uh, and make sure that the hyper flash is taken care of uh, which it is with this so uh, now it's just a matter of putting uh, this back together. This relay came with a, a longer lead on it. Obviously this one didn't have that little wiring extension so I have to make sure I tuck up uh, that wiring out of the way so that it doesn't get caught or pinched on anything so I don't have an electrical short. So not hard to get to, um, just very difficult to get your hands in there uh, to get some of these connectors apart. Uh, but just take your time and as you fiddle with it for a few minutes, uh, you'll be able to get that apart and replace that turn signal relay. Okay, there you go. So that's how you install this tail tidy with the integrated turn signals and license plate light and the uh, relay that you'll need uh, so that when you go to the LEDs that you don't have the hyper flash. Not too bad of a project. It does require a little bit of soldering if you use the pigtail connector like I did, but I'm happy with the way that that turned out. Uh, it allows me to retain my factory wiring harness that's not all chopped up. So if I ever want to take this out, um, all I have to do is plug in the factory uh, fender and light assembly. So that all works out pretty well. This is a much sleeker design. Uh, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, I'll see how it looks at night as well. Uh, but obviously it's obviously a, a much smaller assembly as well. So I think it, you know, it probably saves a couple of pounds. I'm not too worried about that. You know, you add so much other stuff that a pound here or there probably doesn't make too much of a difference. But... Uh, so far, so good. 
Uh, if I have any problems with it, uh, I'll certainly put a, an update down in the uh, episode notes, that sort of thing. I'll put a link to this uh, on the Amazon listing in the episode notes as well. So if it's something you want to look at, uh, you can take a, a look at it there. So as always, if you have any questions, hit me up in the comments. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.